I'm joined, as I said just a moment ago, by um, another home care um, uh, worker, Jane Townsend, CEO of the Home Care Association. Good afternoon to you, Jane. Good afternoon, Sheila. How are you? I'm all right, thank you. Yes, what are you hearing from your own um, colleagues and associates? Well, our members have been emailing and calling us since Friday, expressing concern about struggles to access fuel. Mm. Some are able to get fuel, others have been turned away, even with an employer's letter. But one of our members emailed just a few minutes ago to say they'd contacted their local resilience forum to ask for help. And we're told that because government doesn't consider this to be a, a, an emergency, they can't provide the you know civil contingency plan so basically home care providers are on their own and that's very disappointing because as your previous caller said you know our members are supporting older and disabled people this in is, their own home who can't yeah. look after themselves well th this feels a little bit like a rerun of the ppe issue doesn't it you know you, you're not nhs workers you're not the, therefore the responsibility of the state um you're not uh, nhs workers therefore you, you we don't have to have you in our civil contingencies plan but but we absolutely should seems to me well well to be fair social care is norm, you know is part of civil contingency and local authorities normally organize that but apparently they can't unless central government declares there to be an issue I see. they can't invoke the the legislation so <laughs> we're sort of stuck at the moment from that perspective and you know, it, it, and it I, I mean I don't know I might be doing the government a disservice but I guess they are loath to declare that civil contingencies element of home care because it sends a message that there is indeed a crisis well that, that presumably is, is what it is but the you know it, whoever is responsible is, is not relevant to us we just need to get fuel so we can go to the older and disabled people who absolutely That's cannot manage yeah. on their own we've yeah. had members trying to deliver end of life care yeah. needing to get there to give time critical pain medication and yes. things like that yes. um we can't understand why <laughs> why it's so difficult for government to ask fuel retailers to give home care workers priority yeah, they absolutely um, should. and why they, they can't communicate should. this nationally mm. and how i uh, 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 is it your assessment of your own members? Is it your assessment that things are already bad, about to get bad? How many people... I mean, a tank of fuel only lasts as long as a tank of fuel lasts, doesn't it? Yes, well, I think it's very patchy. You know, right from Friday, some people were struggling. And it's, it's not just the fuel, it's also the traffic jam. Because obviously, home care workers drive around from place to place. Yes. And then, it, you know, if you get stuck for half an hour in a traffic jam, that sends your whole rotor awry and means that people you know you'll be late for visiting so it, it's just causing a lot of trouble i you know we hope it will pass but it's difficult to see quite how, how that's going to happen and has, has the government do you know whether the government has said why they haven't given priority yet to care workers no i've i've communicated about four times with the department of health and social care since friday and I've just had sort of holding emails, no real um, substantial answer, about what's yeah. happening. Um, I know local government association, Association of Directors of Adult Social Services, has been holding meetings this morning to discuss mm. what they can do to help. Um, and I'm sure they will bend over backwards to do whatever they can, because obviously care needs to be maintained and they have a statutory duty to make sure that you know people are, are not left without care well and we know that people are or we already know that sometimes people are we already know that, that that not because of the fault of any of your your members but because of the shortages in carers because of difficulties that pre-existed this crisis i mean it doesn't take it doesn't take much really does it in the care sector for things to tip into care not being delivered no and i mean already our our home care workforce are on their knees we've we've got the worst staffing shortage that anyone can ever remember and now this on top of it it feels like one thing after another and as you said last year at the beginning of the pandemic many felt quite abandoned by the government at the time mm. because PPE wasn't available we were even told masks weren't necessary mm. um, we've had to fight all of last year to get access to routine asymptomatic testing for home care and now when we have this kind of issue nobody wants to 
support sector it feels like and that's how people are experiencing it on the ground yeah no i i, I know and i've seen it it's a, a vital service turned into a cinderella service isn't it jane thank you very much mm -hmm. for your i hope i hope that the government moves on this today let's see if they do jane townsend ceo of the home care association loads of you texting and talking